The name is Princess Natarubicon Sparkle Pony. Nice to meet you. My friend, the time has come. The time you've all been waiting for. It's all accumulated to this very moment. Seeing the fruits of my addiction so that I can finally be cured. I won't have to buy any more radio equipment. The repeater is now online. I'm going to show it to you. I'll go over the final costs, show you how it works, and talk about some of the issues. Oh, there are issues. But first, allow me to digress. As with the previous parts one, two, and two and a half of this video series, you can watch the last part right there. I've been going over the comments. Uh, a lot of people have left helpful comments, actually helpful. Helpful, not hurtful. It's a nice change. And if you've been going through the comments, you may have noticed on some of the commenters, they've got these little round, colorful icons next to their names. And you may have wondered, how do I get a colorful icon next to my name? Well, those are the people that have clicked the join button and joined the channel to help support the channel, me, and my addiction. The best part about joining is that they now have the ability, they're allowed to say and comment whatever they want. They have bought their way into my heart. They can say whatever they want. Most of them have been pretty nice so far. The best perk about joining, becoming a member of the channel. And yet there are the others who left comments. As I mentioned, many helpful suggestions and comments that were very helpful to me. Thank you again. Thank you for those comments. But there are those, there's some, I won't say who, They keep saying it won't work. That antenna won't work. Yet coax won't work. You need solid core gold-plated unobtainium coax. Those duplexers are never going to work. They're trying to overcomplicate it. I'm not trying to talk to Mars here. I'm trying to get a coverage area of my neighborhood, a little bit more than my neighborhood where I live because I'm at the top of the hill and there's a valley underneath me for miles. I want to try to get 30 miles in three directions. Shouldn't be that difficult. It's turning out to be difficult. We'll talk about that. But I don't need a $3,000 repeater set up and a $500 antenna on the roof. I'm not trying to build a club's repeater that's going to sit on a mountaintop. I just, people, I just want an inexpensive little repeater. Why? Why do they have to complicate it? So one of the big issues that a lot of people kept mentioning was the duty cycle, the duty cycle. They said duty. And I think I mentioned this in the previous video, but Ocean says the duty cycle that the, these radios can run 24 seven as long as they're kept cool. I'm not saying that I necessarily trust what Ocean says. I'm just saying what they're saying. So we will see. Many commenters said, oh, you can just go buy a repeater for more than what you're paying for those Ocean radios. Okay. So the costs, got my notes here. So the cost, just for the re repeater part itself, the two ocean radios, the power supply, that's it. Just for that part, meaning all the other stuff, we'll talk about that, but all those other things you'd have to buy if you bought one of those off the shelf repeaters. So the ocean radios are $320 a piece. So that's $640. The power supply was $150, so that's $790 for effectively a 50-watt repeater. I'm not sure that you can find another repeater anywhere on the market, as many commenters said, for less than $790. If you can, I'd like to see it. Leave a link. Oh, you don't have a link? Now, the other stuff you'd have to buy anyway, whether you bought an off-the-shelf repeater or built one with the two radios, you need an uh, antenna. In my case, I got the Tram 1486. That was $80. The XLT duplexer is $150. You don't even need to do that. You could just use two antennas, but then you're going to need longer coax. And then, you know, an antenna is another 80 bucks or so. It, you may not even save any money. You do need coax. And as mentioned, as was pointed out by the viewers, and as I learned, the higher quality coax, you, you do definitely want the highest quality you can get. I got the LMR 400. There were comments saying LMR 400 won't work in a repeater. Seems to be working fine for me. LMR 400 uh, going to cost around $150. D depending on how long you need, it may be more, may or be less. So the total amount is roughly 
$1,170. That doesn't count every little connector and patch cord. That doesn't add up to very much. So the cost for the repeater, $790. Cost for everything together, antenna and everything, the whole ball of gum, $1,170. Can you find that whole package cheaper somewhere else? A lot of you said I could. Again, I'm waiting for those links. I hear a lot of this. I see a lot of this, but I don't see any actual... Okay, so let's go down to the garage. I'm going to go on a field trip. Remember how fun field trips were in the third grade? I'm going to take a field trip down to the garage, and I'm going to show it to you. Don't you hate when YouTubers do stuff like that? They cut down to the somewhere different, like if it's, oh my gosh, he cut, he did a cut, he, oh my gosh. So I've got my two Ocean KG-1000Gs. This is the one that transmits. This is the one that receives. I've got my duplexer here, power supply here. I've got a little uh, wireless thermometer so I can keep an eye on the temperature. This is the cable that runs between the two radios. It's like 20 feet long. Both radios are wired into the power supply. And on the duplexer, I've got the antenna in that's my LMR 400 coax going up to the antenna. And then I've got two patch cables. These are uh, RG213. These are lower grade patch cables, but they're only 18 inches long. So I get less loss there. One goes to each radio. Got the receive here, 467600, which goes to my receiver. Transmit goes to 462600. So let's power it up and see what happens. I've had it powered up. It's been up for days, so I know it works, but I'll show you here. So I've got single switch to turn it on. Frequency mode. Oh, she sounds nice. And when there's two of them singing together, oh. First of all, just a quick recap on how difficult this was to set up. This was super easy. It took me a long time because a lot of parts were back ordered. I ordered the wrong power supply. I'm still using a loner duplexer. The first loaner duplexer uh, had an issue. All of this could be set up and configured in an hour. The thing that takes a long time is of course running the antenna, mounting the antenna outside, and that's still an ongoing saga. But as far as configuring all this, it was one or two menu options on each radio and then plugging them into each other. Super simple. See the previous video, part two and a half on the actual configuration steps. It's super easy. Now I don't have the microphone connected because I don't need it when it's running. I just leave it here, been running for days now. If I need to make a program change, I can do most of it through the menu, but it's just easiest to hook up the uh, microphone, plug it in, don't have to turn it off or anything. I can just plug it right in. Unlock, function select. Unlock, function select. I can just plug it right in and start using it, unplug it when I'm done. I don't leave it plugged in because based on suggestions from viewers, anything plugged into the radio can, can pick up static, especially when I'm transmitting. So I keep it unplugged just to keep the RF noise down. I haven't noticed the difference, but once you've got it programmed, you know, once I got it all dialed in, I, didn't, I don't really need this now anyway. So I just keep it disconnected. So the way it works is the receive unit is always listening on the repeater receive frequency. So when somebody goes to GMRS channel 25 or repeater channel number three, automatically their radio is going to transmit at 467600. So when they key up, this radio will hear it. And at the same time, this radio from the connection will start transmitting at 462600, which is also the same as simplex GMRS channel 17, but on a GMRS radio, you just put your radio on, on repeater channel three or GMRS channel 25. It's different on all radios. And it takes care of all that for you. That's the offset. If you read about offsets on repeaters, plus five or minus five megahertz, that's what that is. The offset is the difference between the receive and the transmit. In GMRS, you don't have to worry about it. It's a non-thing other than knowing those numbers for when you program these radios, because they had to dial in those two frequencies. So I happen to have here a handheld already set on my GMRS channel 25 or repeater channel three. I'm going to walk away a few feet and key up using this and you'll see what happens. And I will be transmitting, but it's low power. It won't go too far. Repeater check, one, two, one, two. 
So you could see that the uh, repeater, they both lit up. Uh, the receiver was receiving, the transmitter was transmitting, and you may have heard the fans kick in. I've got it set so the fans will turn on as soon as there's any activity. And that is it. It's really very simple. I could pack this all up and take it with me somewhere if I wanted to. I could replace the power supply with a car battery, and I could replace the big rooftop antenna with a, a smaller antenna and use this same duplexer. This type of duplexer are actually made for mobile installation, so it's made to go into a car, so I could drive up to the top of a hill and use it. It's almost portable. I could easily mount everything into a box and make it portable. So now that you've seen what you came here for, let's go back into the studio and talk more about some of the issues. Oh, and we're back. Again, oh, the YouTuber's so cool. We don't do that here. We do not waste your time. I do not waste your... Your time is too valuable. So how well does it work? It works pretty well. There are some issues, though. My goal was to have roughly 30 miles coverage in three directions. I don't care about what's behind me because there's a mountain range behind me. I'm at the top of a hill. I'm at almost 2,000 feet elevation. Foothills. I'm on the foothills. And then there's a huge valley with mountains pretty much surrounding me. So I'm, I'm transmitting to a big bowl. So if you just want to build a repeater for your around your farm or that you can drag out with you when you go camping or whatever to cover the mountain ranges around you, be wary of all the people that you'll see leaving comments on YouTube videos saying it won't work, you can't do it. Blah. Some people just don't seem to get it through their socially maladjusted brains that we may not need to talk to Mars. We just may want to cover a small area. So this will do the job. It depends on your terrain and some obvious factors. Just be wary of all the naysayers. So in my testing so far, the repeater's only been up for a couple of days. I've had it in medium or low power most of the time. The antenna is not, oh, the antenna. This antenna has been a nightmare. It's not in its final resting place. I thought I had a good spot for it, but when I started doing my testing, it's it's got some major dead zones because of the house is blocking it and all the other houses on the block on the some of the periphery edges and directions. But even with those issues, so some of the test results I've got so far. So as you may know, I'm in the Inland Empire of Southern California around Ontario Airport. If you know Southern California, I'm near Ontario Airport. I'm up above it. You can see the planes landing several miles below us, but that's the general area. Got a report of uh, somebody driving on the, the 91 freeway in Chino. And according to Google Earth, that was 20 miles. Another one last night uh, at the 57 freeway in Lambert. That's way down in Orange County, uh, 25 miles away. And the best so far, Lake Matthews down Interstate 15, uh, Nichols Road. Nichols, Nicholas Road, 31 miles. So for all of you that said it won't work, it works. So there are those massive holes in coverage, like I said, because I thought I had a good location with the antenna, but then when I put it up there and then look and then go out and measure where my signal is, it's not going to work. So I am going to have to put it back to my original location on top of the roof that's like this on the chimney. So I'm going to work out all the kinks, make sure everything's working, and then the last thing I'll do is have that antenna mounted up there. Because once it goes up there, I'm not touching it again. So that'll be it. And that's going to be 30 to 40 feet higher above ground level than it currently is with no obstructions. It should perform much better. Heat, as I was concerned about, is an issue. So those radios, they get hot. And the power supply is like a little space heater. It's not, it doesn't, they don't get hot to the touch, but that heat builds up in that small cabinet. So if I keep the doors open, it's not much of an issue. Everything works fine. But if I keep the doors closed, it's getting too hot. It hasn't got above like 86 degrees. Uh, and that was on a hot day. It was 95 degrees outside. I'm going to either have to keep those cabinet doors open all the time, which I don't want to do because it, well, I'm not a savage. Or I'll uh, put another hole. I don't know if you noticed when we were down there, there was a hole where the uh, cables were coming through. That goes straight through that hole is under the house and the crawl space is very cool out in there. I'll bore another hole and put a fan in there to circulate the air or something that should take care of it. Or worst case, if I get lazy, I'll just leave the cabinet doors open. One thing to be wary of, this thing when it's transmitting on high kills my Wi-Fi. My, my Wi-Fi box, my main one is very near the antenna where it is now. I transmit on high power, cuts off the Wi-Fi. I can hear my kid yelling from across the house. So I'm 
I know that once I move the antenna up onto the roof, that will not be an issue. But if you install a repeater of your own, or just a base station that, that transmits 50 watts, if your kids start screaming about the internet going down, that's why. This thing was really easy to put together. Less than an hour, you can put everything together, to run in the cable for the antenna, mounting the antenna, obviously that takes longer. Super simple. And according to my calculations, fairly inexpensive. Now this is not the end of it. I still need to install the Ideomatic, so I'll be ordering that. I'm waiting for buy2wayradios.com to uh, get a shipment of their uh, interface cable that plugs the Ocean KG 1000Gs into the Ideomatic. That will automatically send out a ID, uh, my license number on the repeater, so that people listening that aren't aware of the repeater, they'll hear it, they'll get ID'd, they'll know where to go to get information about it so they can use it. Because again, I'm a pillar of my community, that's why I built this whole thing, so that everybody in the area can use this repeater, sponsored by buy2wayradios.com. I also want to test the Jackery 1000 solar generator with it, just to get an idea of how long it lasts in the real world, but I want to wait till more people are using it. Because if I hook that thing up to it now, it would last forever because nobody's using it because it doesn't really suck up much power until somebody's talking on it. So I'll do that in a couple of weeks. And then, of course, there will be the antenna saga getting that mounted. So I'll give another update once I get that done and then more range tests and final results. But for now, it works. It's working well. If you have questions, if I left anything out, leave a comment below. If you have suggestions, something that I missed or got wrong, leave a comment below. Let me know. Dickhead comments, hurtful comments will be pinned to the top for everyone to enjoy, or I'll just delete them unless you join. If you have one of those little icons next to your name, go ahead, man. You bought me and say whatever you want. I can take it. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the track.